Well, well, God bless every single one of you. Welcome to our midweek service here. And we want to welcome you again to another segment of Culture Talk. We are so blessed to be here again tonight as we deep, or rather, as we dig deep, as we dive into some important discussions that I believe are going to bless you. So, without any further delay, I'd like to introduce to you a very special guest, a good friend of mine, and, and a friend that I, I just want to say I'm blessed to say that I can call him my friend. I've had a couple of conversations with him already. We've been out to breakfast, and I really can see that we're building a very good bond for the honor and glory of the Lord. So tonight, I want to introduce and welcome to our segment, Culture Talk Tonight, Pastor Reggie Royal, all the way from Lifeline Church. All the way from down the street. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be here, man. Thank you for having me here. Oh, amen. Uh, amen. It, it's, it's a privilege and an honor in times like this to have people you can call friend, as you said. Absolutely. Uh, with all of the relational turmoil in the world, to be able to say, hey, this is a brother, this is a friend, it's a good thing. So I'm happy to be here. Hey, Amen. Well, thank you so much. I, I know that you also have a very busy schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, you do travel a lot. Uh, I, I think you picked up some travel now ever since after, yeah. after COVID and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. all that's been going on. Uh -huh. And uh, But Pastor Reggie, if you wouldn't mind, take a moment and just tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself and your ministry. Well, I am um, 48 years old. I've been married 25 years to mm. um, London Royal. We have three boys, um, Justin 16, Jaden 13, and Corday 13. Um, we pastor, as you said, Lifeline Church, um, right down the street here. Um, we've been pastoring there for, it'll be 14 years in two weeks. Mm. Um, been in ministry maybe 25 years though. Um, and and um, we have campuses in Monterey, Mexico, and Amen. one on the south side of Chicago. And we are simply <clears throat> trying to fulfill the mandate that God has given us in the earth. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Um, I never wanted to pastor. I wanted to be a singer. Mm. I wanted to be the next Fred Hammond. Come on. <laughs> and, Come on um, now. And God had other plans before the foundation of the world. And I believe um, he puts things in us and then he separates us to those callings when he can trust us with it. Mm -hmm. And so when we were very young, we knew it was time for us to lead a local community. We didn't want to do it. We got released from our then pastors and here we are 14 years later and God has been faithful to us. Amen. Yeah. You know, Pastor Reggie, just to hear the fact that you've been in ministry for 25 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Folks, that says a lot. Mm. 25 years having a heart to just honor the Lord yeah. Yeah. and reach the lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think you and I know that we're living in a day and age and time where people are just quitting the ministry. That's right. That's They're right. stepping down, especially... Uh, amid COVID mm -hmm. and all that people are dealing with. Yeah. Uh, you have pastors, and I think you and I were talking, mm -hmm. uh, either that are one side of the fence of, of being so frustrated with what's going on, and you had other pastors on the other side of the fence that are all for what's going on, That's and right. you had those that, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. And I'm, I'm tired. out. And I'm checking out. That's Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, God bless you and your ministry and your family, and I am so thankful and give God the glory. Yeah that you are willing to endure. That's right. Amen. Uh, I've got a scripture, folks, that I want to read to kind of use as a springboard as we set up this platform for our conversation here tonight. And I want you to take your Bibles and go to the book of Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible says, beginning with verse 15, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation 
in the knowledge of him. Now, there are two key things that I want to highlight in these verses, and that is faith in the Lord and their love towards the saints. Pastor Reggie, God's called us, not just pastors, not as, as pastors, but as members of the body of Christ yeah. to move forward in faith in the Lord and to allow God to use us as we love people. Um, I know you guys have an awesome campaign mm -hmm. called Love People. To love people, yeah. Yeah, to love people. And uh, I've even noticed uh, some of the stuff on social media. You guys uh, did a phenomenal job. I, I think you guys blessed someone with a brand new truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, gift cards were given away. Yeah. Groceries were, were given away. Uh, you, you have, um, Lifeline Church has been a church who has exercised faith mm -hmm. and love towards people. A demonstration of love. Absolutely. And however, amid all that's gone on, I'd like to ask you first question, and we'd like to get your perspective mm -hmm. on, how do you see the state and the condition of the church today? The state and the condition of the church um, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, um, Amen. the called out ones, knowing that we are the church. You, you can probably get a million answers for that question. Mm -hmm. uh, but my strong conviction, my strong opinion is, I believe, although there's craziness all around us and we're in the end times, I believe the church is in the greatest position it's ever been. I don't know if the church realizes it though. Mm. Because God is in the midst of capturing our hearts again. I believe God is getting his church back. Yes, he is. Um, I believe he's gotten his church's attention. Um, and he hasn't had it for a long time in my opinion. And, and people are now kind of um, repositioning themselves, resetting themselves, assessing themselves. Some are falling away. Some are drawing closer. Some are getting serious. Some are playing games. The Bible says even in this time, the very elect will be deceived and, and fall away. So there's all kinds of things going on with the church. But I believe it's the greatest moment for the church. Amen. Why? Because dark is getting darker. Mm. And in those times, we should be shining brighter. It is a great opportunity for the, the greatest harvest we've ever seen to come into the kingdom of God. Um, I don't think the church understands that fully because we're kind of waiting for COVID to be over to get back to the normal. But I believe God's going to do different things with his church during this time Amen. because he's about to wrap this up and he loves people more than anything and he desires that none be lost. So how that looks, how that harvest comes in, I tell our church all the time this. I believe the greatest harvest we're about to see won't even happen in our buildings. Mm. Which is why God is capturing the hearts of his church again. Because we have to be so sensitive to his voice to hear the instructions to gain the harvest that's already ready and waiting for us. That's what I believe. I believe the church, even myself, I'm a part of the church. I've been shaken. Um, I've had to assess myself. Mm. Um, I had to realign some things, throw out some things, um, tune into some things, sharpen my hearing and my seeing so I won't miss what's happening right now. That's right. I think the church um, is in a great place. And I believe, here's what I love about the church. I think God is patient with us. That's right. Even in this. And so there are some people that are going through for sure. We don't make light of that. Some people have, even with this COVID, they've got hit with that really hard. We've lost people. Um, everybody has been impacted in some way, negatively even, by this whole ordeal. But I believe God will always take care of his church. So if we can just reassess ourselves, realign ourselves, reset our trust, and understand that the whole world is being shaken. But God's going to take care of his church. 
So the condition of the church, the state of our flocks, they're all different. In our local church, I got some people who are, man, we're people of faith. We're riding this out. God is good. I got some people, pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. This thing is terrible. You know, I have some people, like we said earlier, they've just checked out. Um, I love God, but, mm. and now mm. God has to deal with the buts. Mm. Um, I love my church, but. I love my pastor. I like serving, but. One of our elders said this a couple of weeks ago. We had to sit down like this. And he said, this is an elder in our church. He says, my want to has been under attack. Mm. I want to go to church. I want to wow. continue serving, but that's been under attack. And, and we all have to assess ourselves to find out why. And I think it is, it is reckless of us to just assume that everybody is just not listening to God or not close to God or living reckless. It's not the case. People have been impacted mentally through this last year and they're just trying to figure things out. That's right. And some people found out, although I love God, I, I didn't know God as much as I thought I knew him. And this thing just shook me in a way I never expected. And so we got to be gracious with people. We have to be considerate and empathetic with people and not just cast them out because they don't feel like coming to church. Yeah, first I was like, you tripping. You mean you don't want to come to church. But, but I don't know what you're mentally dealing with. I don't know where your walk is with the Lord. I don't know what God has said to you. I don't know that. And so all I can do is pray for you, love on you, and keep moving. But, but the general answer, because I can give you 500 answers, <laughs> the general answer is I believe the church is in the greatest position it's ever been. Amen. Ever been before. I Amen. believe that. You know, uh, you said one key thing. In fact, uh, we just read it in scripture is uh, the need to exercise our faith. Yeah. Our faith. And uh, Pastor Reggie, I believe that you and I kind of got saved right around the same time. Mm -hmm. Back in, it, was it, did you say in the 80s? Well, I, I think I've been saved like five times. One of them was in the 80s. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's been the case for several yeah, of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, since, you know, since the, the 80s mm -hmm. that we've been around, I think both you and I, we came to the church and uh, besides just being treated as an adult mm -hmm. immediately. Yep. Yep. We were raised in the faith. We learned how to live by faith, mm -hmm. exercise faith, mm -hmm. stand in faith, mm -hmm. pray in faith, mm -hmm. bind and rebuke in faith. Mm -hmm. So I believe that you and I have been through seasons. Yeah. Where when a season uh, that would begin to threaten either our lives or the church or the mm -hmm. life of the church we immediately went into faith mode. That's right. All right, we're going to be okay. God's going to bring us through this. I also believe that as we were growing in our faith, God eventually promoted us as leaders mm -hmm. within the church. Mm -hmm. And as leaders within the church, what we did is we, we led by faith. Yeah. We were examples, not just our pastors, but we ourselves who were in the trenches with our pastors. Mm. Uh, if the pastor was there, he had his leaders there yes, right. standing right with him. Whatever the pastor preached, they backed it up. They, they, they basically influence others to believe what pastor is preaching is biblical. Mm. Not that we coerce people to believe, but they saw it in our lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. A faith lifestyle just makes a huge difference. That's right. So what would you say? Based on what you have noticed, is the condition and the state of leaders, the leaders within the church today? I think leaders are going through again, um, reassessing their leadership. It's interesting. I had a staff call today with our staff team, and we talked about leading and serving, um, which I've been talking about for a long time. But I kind of brought it a different way today because I think we got the serving part down i think we've struggled through the leading part and throughout this time our leading has been under attack as well mm -hmm. because some leaders fail back as if because of what's going on i don't have to lead i don't have that responsibility anymore i can just kind of chill out because of course you go you go you guys know it's, it's a pandemic 
But what better time that we need leaders in a time like this? Amen. Whether you're over a small group or the music ministry or the youth, we need you to rise up to the occasion now and lead. So leaders do. Yes, we're in the same deal. I'm facing the exact same pandemic you're facing. My children are affected by it and my money is affected by it and all of that. But I still have to lead. And so leaders got, got to understand, they got to go back to the why of their leadership. And the why doesn't take you out when things happen. As a matter of fact, it pushes you further in. Mm. And, and, and so what is, what is leadership? It is not just singing over people or making rules. It is, it is if you're in an organization like Culture City Church, it is, it is assisting the pastor in moving whatever the objectives is for that time, whether it's a pandemic or not. It is managing people. Um, it is keeping people from killing one another. It is, it is, it is embracing teamwork. You know, it, these are all things that must come into play for leaders during this time. And I think most leaders have kind of checked out too. And, and I get it. I get it. You've been hit. You've been affected. But you are graced for times like this. Your church needs you. The team you were leading needs you. And yes, you've been hit. And yes, you've been affected. But there is an anointing on you to lead even during this time. Amen. And so I think leaders got to, they got to know who they are. Like the condition of leaders, they got to reassess who, who am I? Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and let God minister to you. I think for us as lead pastors or senior leaders, you know, we get frustrated. I know I do. And, and we want to take it in our own hands sometimes. So let me get these leaders together. We, we can pray, we can teach, we can model, and then let God do the rest with them. Because if they are true leaders, then that means God has a way of getting their hearts and saying, hey, yeah, you checked out, but now it's time you check back in. Mm. You, 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 had, you had a breather on the bench, but you come on back in the game now because you're needed. Leaders got to know that they're valuable and they're needed during times like this. Amen. They got to know that because if not, they'll feel like, well, you know, I'm just going to get in line with everybody else. We need leadership, not just in our churches, in the world. That's it. We need leadership at the car wash. We need leadership at the grocery store, in our schools. We need leadership. And, and so I think we've had this misconception that, well, I'm not a leader. You are. You know, if you go to this church and whether you lead anything in this church, if you have a home, you lead there. Before I'm a leader at Lifeline Church, I'm a leader in my home. I lead my home. London leads our home. Amen. Um, I'm the pastor of my home first. And so leaders got to got to know who they are, allow God to minister to them, and, and check back in. Because a lot of them have checked out. Yes. You, you, you've checked out and you're kind of just hanging around. And I get it. There is a lot of questions now. Uh, you know, we, we got questions for God and it's affected our hearts. When your heart is hit, you, you, you act different. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the local church, this thing hit our leaders in a way and, our, and members in our churches that I don't think we really, really understand. Exactly. Um, I, 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 it, and, and people are still trying to figure it out. I mean, we, we got hit with this in March of last year. And we were told, we're going to shut the schools down and things for about two weeks. That's right. and we'll be back at it. <laughs> and here we are approaching a year where, although I'm a leader at Culture City Church, or I lead this at Lifeline Church, I also got kids at home that haven't been in school. I'm dealing with that. I got a husband who was laid off, and I'm dealing with that. Mm. And I got all these things that have affected me because of this pandemic. And, and not just the pandemic, some of it was before the pandemic. And I also got to figure out my leading at the local church. And I just kind of mentally checked out. And so I think the greatest thing we can do for our leaders is pray for them, encourage them, let them know that they're valuable, and support them. And, and, and because, because the state of leaders, it's been weakened. Yeah. It has. Um, we can fluff it, act like all is well, and quote scriptures. And here's another thing you mentioned. I'm glad you talked about us being people of faith and things like that. A lot of people I've noticed, and especially leaders, and I was here myself at some point, we were taught faith during good times, though. Mm, mm, so so good. when I was taught all my faith lessons, everything was going great. 
So it was, man, it's a good lesson. And praise God. And we yeah. walk by faith. But we weren't taught how to deal with it when life hits. Because mm. life will hit. It will rain. Something will happen that will cause you to come off of what you believe. We've not been, in my opinion, for me at that time, I wasn't properly taught how to walk through mm. when things happen mm. that are contrary to my faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, Pastor Reggie, if I can add to that, mm -hmm. as I begin to think throughout the years of, of Christianity and my upbringing in the church, yeah. uh, as well as yourself, I think that in my own life, as I reflect, is that I've learned how to be in the divine presence of God. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've had services where, uh, man, we are in the Shekinah glory mm -hmm. of God. We're worshiping, we're singing. And, and mind you, back then, we would worship just to a drum beat. Hmm. There's yeah. no keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no guitar, no, you know. And then today, there's click tracks that you can enhance. Yeah. We didn't have all these whistles and bells. And there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it was just a simple old beats on the drums and mm -hmm. we were just worshiping. And so, so being in the divine presence is something that, that I've learned, that I was taught. And we were doers. We were always doing ministry, mm. doing ministry. You know, you're in the divine presence, now go do. Presence, divine, go do. But I think the part that we missed out on is mm. the development yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. Which is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I've noticed in my life, yeah, I know how to be in the divine presence. And yeah, I, I've, I've been doing ministry, mm -hmm. but the development. The development. And I remember I was, um, right now I'm part of a coaching network that's called Leaderscape, uh, which is led by Michael Murphy, mm -hmm. based out of Australia. And a phenomenal, great mentor and coach. And what he's been teaching us is, he's been reminding us as pastors that, Ministry builds people. Mm. Leaders build the church. Mm. Mm. Again, ministry builds people, but it's leaders. Leaders that build the church. Mm. So, so, Pastor Reggie, as we move forward, mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, even the Apostle Paul says, having the eyes of their hearts enlightened, enlightened. so that they may see the hope yeah. of their calling. Let's touch a little bit on, on the vision, okay, on the vision. What do we see here? What's it going to take mm -hmm. for us to rebuild, reestablish, reassess, mm -hmm. and develop leaders? What, what do you think it's going to take? I, I think it's going to take us um, returning to the heart of God. Amen. And cutting all the fat of what we've added to his agenda. A lot of the reasons we're suffering through so many things is because it was never his intent for us anyway. We've added a lot of stuff to church and how we do church and how we lead and how we train and how we develop. I heard Bishop Jake said this once. He said, if God were to come to some of our meetings in our churches, he would, would ask us, where did we get that from? Because it didn't come from him. Mm. Um, we'd have to teach him how to do church our way because we're not doing it his way. Mm. And I think and to get back to developing leaders and developing people, we got to get back to the heart of God. That's right. Because it's not difficult. We've made it difficult. And, and, and this development piece is so key. But this generation and generations before us have gotten so caught up into the bedazzling part of ministry, they didn't want to be developed. Mm. Just give me the mic, give me the platform, give me a flyer, let me do this. And the developing part is what keeps you where you need to be. That's right. So I went through years of development. Um, um, we got to get back to submission. I went, through, I went through submission. I submitted to my leaders. You know, um, I honor, get back to honor. We have to get back to humility. That's good. Because I can, I can have all the programs to develop you, but if you don't submit to them, if, if, if your, your team, your leaders won't honor and submit to what you have in your heart for them, it won't happen. And you can have their best interests at heart. You can have the great plan to take them through the process of getting where they need to be um, in God and in their life. But if they don't submit to you, they'll never get from you what they should be getting from you. And so I'm not talking about balanced biblical submission. Not a lot of the things we've seen it end up 
ads and it's not healthy. We're not talking about that. That happens. We get it. That's it right. happens in church. Um, we get it. Let's stick to what God has called us to do. Submission is not a bad thing. Even if people have tainted it. It's not a bad thing. So to develop leaders, to develop people, we got to get back to God's heart for Amen. us. We really Amen. do. Yeah. That is so good, Pastor Reggie. In saying that, I believe that the pastor mm. has to get back to the heart of God. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, I remember uh, both my wife and I, we've uh, pioneered two churches. We started at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Um, one in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, one in Cleveland. But both times that we went, we just, we just had the heart of God. Mm -hmm. We knew it was going to work because we had the heart of God. Even when we came back in, uh, we still felt, okay, this wasn't in vain. S seeds were sown. Mm -hmm. And so a, a pastor who has the heart of God, leads with the heart of God, is healthy for the congregation. It's healthy for the leaders. Mm -hmm as they get behind the pastor. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, let's be honest. You know, if I can be transparent here yeah. with you. Uh, I've, I've, I've been speaking to uh, many pastors since the pandemic began and today. You don't know how many countless times I hear, I want to resign. Yeah. I, I'm going to quit. Or... Um, I think God's called me to do something else. I'm going to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Or I'm just going to go serve under someone else. Maybe, maybe become their discipleship pastor. Maybe become their, their evangelism pastor. Mm -hmm. But I can tell that they're not speaking from a place where they're hearing the voice of God. Mm. They're speaking from a very hurt and discouraged Yeah, frustrated. Place. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you just mentioned some things. Accountability, submission, mm -hmm. honor. Pastor Reggie, if we're honest, a lot of that has been thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. And even now, since the church is opened again, you have people that there was a time where if they didn't come, they called you and told you they weren't coming. <laughs> That's right. Here's why I can't make it. Something happened. Now they just don't show up. That's right. Won't mm -hmm. call, won't communicate. Mm -hmm. And when you ask them, it's like, Oh, I just didn't come. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I can see that's been wearing on a lot of pastors. Yeah. But tell us, what, what do you see? How do you see the state and condition of the pastor? I think if, if all pastors are honest, whether you on a mega platform or not a mega platform, pastors are feeling it right now. Yeah. Um, the reason you don't necessarily know it because we've been taught not to talk about it. We've been taught to take lickings and keep on ticking. We've been taught to lead while bleeding as if that's a badge of honor. And it's not a bad, it's dangerous actually. Um, just, I remember myself just, I think it was last year, I went to my dad's house, my natural father, and I weeped and I says, I'm done with this. Mm. Um, we're going to relocate. They can have this church, you know, and, I'm, and, and, and like you said, I'm not talking out of hearing from God, I'm talking out of hurt and frustration and how dare this happen to me. And I've served and I've given my life and my wife and this, and people don't want to submit and they, people are always offended. There's always something. Yeah. And I says, I'm done. And my dad says, you're running. He mm. says, and this, he says, I can support this if it's God, but I know it's not. And you don't get to check out because you've been hurt. You get to deal with it. You get to process it. You get to let God heal you. But you don't get to clock out of the assignment until God lets you clock out. So I think the condition of most pastors, if they're honest, they're feeling it, they're discouraged, they're hurting, they're bleeding, they're trying to keep going. There's a lot of pride in the mix. Because I believe what was many pastors are given the opportunity during this time, um, there, there was a grace to quit during this time if it was the will of God for you. I believe these last 11 months provided a grace to step away. Mm, wow. Never thought of it that way. Yeah, I, I believe it. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of people step away 
in grace. Like, okay, this is my season. Thank God I'm moving on. I've seen people merge with other churches. I've seen people um, shut down and just join other church. All kinds of things have happened and there was a grace to do it. And it was not man reasoned. It was God breathed. But then there's others who are holding on. And the frustration is rising because God may be saying, let go. And you're holding on. I think what we need as pastors, and we talk about it all the time, we need safe outlets. Our churches are not safe for us because we, we can't pour out of ourselves with those that we lead in terms of our hurt, our pain. We, we can't do it because they expect you to come through these doors and lead with grace every Sunday. And you do because mm. you're grace to do it. But they seldom have no idea of, of all that you've endured to get to that point to preach for that hour or 45 minutes on a Sunday. Because we have pastors, we have mentors, we have all these things, but they can only help us as much as we talk with them and are honest with them. Mm, mm. And most pastors, again, have been taught, don't talk about it, don't deal with it, just keep going. Because if I go and tell somebody that I have a weakness, or I'm dealing with this, or I'm insecure, or I'm dealing with rejection, or I'm hurt, or these members hurt me, they'll look at me different. And I'm supposed to be the big bad pastor. And, and so I think pastors are feeling it. A lot of what you see on social media and a lot of things, it's not, it's not genuine. Mm. It's me trying to keep the act up or people trying to keep the act up of we're all good. And you've been hit. That's Your right. church has been hit. The finances have been hit. You've lost members. This has happened. I know many pastors who are at the verge of losing their buildings because of COVID. Um, they've lost several members. Monies have went backwards. And, and we, we can only so long stand and say, well, all is well. It's not well. <laughs> I have to address this. And so the state of pastors, not all, but a lot of us are dealing with things during this time that we gather um, our elder said this on Sunday. He said it's heavy for us because we're carrying it. Mm. Meaning we should be cast in this. And we've become professional carriers instead of professional casters wow. as pastors. And I'm only speaking for myself, but I know I'm not the only one. And, we, and I think once we allow God to minister to us, he'll show us safe places See, we're safe places for a lot of people. You're a safe place for a lot of people. They come to you. You can counsel. You can cover. They can cry. They can tell you all of their business, and you're going to be a great pastor to them. But most pastors don't have that safe place. And if you're married, you don't want to keep taking it home to your wife. She's like, leave that at the church. I love you, but we've had enough of this church for the week. And so I believe that pastors, again, great place. We're going through it, but when you go through it, it should push us back to the Father, That's right. which is where we need to be. He can heal, he can cover, he can restore, he can breathe on us, give us new direction. He can cause the, the eyes of our heart to be enlightened so we can know what we should do next. Should I close? Should I stay? Should I sail? Should I merge? What should I do? Because if we're just waiting for this to all be over, and the announcement to come and say, COVID is over, back to normal people. We've missed God. Because right. God is doing something new even in this. Mm. And, and, and although many of us have went through this last year or two, um, and it's been hell, oh, we're coming out as pure gold. We're coming out with our hands up. But that doesn't come by church antics. It comes by us getting back to the Father's heart, letting him minister to us, letting him bring us to a place of wholeness and then when we get there we can hear Amen. I can hear clear now okay this is what God wants me to do here's how the next looks for culture city here's how the next looks for lifeline church because I can hear but it, if I'm not whole it's hard for me to hear because I'm hearing through my brokenness because I'm still mad at these people for leaving and these people for saying what they said and these people never came back and the money's low and we're the one nobody can carry the weight of a pastor but a pastor we can explain it, but they don't understand it. They don't understand that, that we carry a weight and we're grace to carry it. I'm not complaining. Yeah. But, but if we don't stay close to the Father, it will crush us. That's right. 
But it's a weight that even your associate pastor can't understand. Sometimes you let them come and let them preach on a Sunday or two. You get to play pastor, sir. You're not the, the senior man. There's a weight on the senior man and senior woman that's not on anybody else. And so the state of the pastor, again, I think everybody's in a great place if they get back to the father, get his intent and his heart for this time. But naturally, we're all going through it. But when I go through, I do that. I go through Amen. and I look for Jesus because when I'm in trouble and we've had some trouble, he's a very present help. Amen. He's always concerned about me. He comes to me with answers. He, he, he embraces me. He talks with me. He heals the brokenhearted. But, but, but we got to make sure we find that place in him as pastors. Amen. Pastor Reggie, in, in talking with you mm -hmm. and listening to the state of the church, the state and condition of the church, the state and the condition of the leaders and pastors, I believe it's safe to assume that everybody is just pretty much hurt. <laughs> yeah. Hurt. Yeah. And, and folks, listen to me. Mm. We don't negate that as pastors. Um, I believe that my heart and Pastor Reggie's heart is still you, the people. <laughs> and even while we're leading, while we're bleeding, mm. we're willing to bleed some more for you. Yes. Because it's the cross that, not that we're forced to carry, because Pastor Reggie, you said something powerful. People have the grace mm. to step out. That's right. The grace, but many did not. Mm. Because they understood the call of God mm. and the people. So, so Pastor Reggie, I believe we're, we're speaking to a lot of people who I, I'm sure many of you have determined within yourself to fight, pray, stand. But maybe there are some of you that you've been teeter-tottering. Mm. You've been weak. You're at the point of giving up. The bottom line is all of us are hurt in some form or way. Hmm. And we're not here to nurture or to, or to pet or to just, you know, kind of just find a way to just still keep that little hurt within you. We, we want it gone in Jesus' name. Hmm. So, Pastor Reggie, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, mm -hmm. if you just want to encourage whoever's watching right here online, as God uses you to speak into their lives mm -hmm. and into that hurt. I would say that you feel what you feel. You have every right. It's legitimate for you to feel what you feel, for you to have the emotions that you have. Just don't become them and let them overtake you. Jesus himself feels our pain. He feels what we feel. But he also says, I am he that heals the brokenhearted. Amen. I bind up their wounds. I pour in the oil and the wine. So allow God to minister to you. You know, you may be, like he says, in and out, up and down, to come to church. I haven't been back yet. I don't know. I got so many unanswered questions. Well, Jesus is the answer to all of our questions. He's our hope. He's our future. Allow him to minister to you. Sit with him. Um, be open with him. Yeah, with Jesus with your father, with God, and allow him to heal, allow him to mend, allow him to restore and bring you back to the place that you desire to be yourself. You love God. You love the local church. You love serving. Your family does, but you've been hit. And we, we don't underestimate that. We don't make light of that. But I want you to be made whole. I want you to be healed. I want you to be restored. I want you to allow God to take you back and restore the joy of your salvation so you can smile again, so you can serve the Lord with gladness. Yes, it happened. Yes, we're all confused. Yes, we all don't know. But Jesus gives clarity to our confusion. Jesus gives answers to all of our questions. Let him do that. In Jesus' name, let him do that.
Hallelujah. In fact, right now, I just feel led to pray for those yeah. folks. Come on. Let's just worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Thank folks. You, those of you that are watching online, just lift up your yes, hand Lord. to begin to praise the yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we give you glory. We give you glory, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, Lord, right now, God. As I begin to outstretch my hands right now to mm. every single person who is watching online, whether on their iPad, their yes, iPhone, yes. telephone, computer, or their television Lord, screen, Jesus. a flat screen, I am praying, Father, Lord, for a supernatural mm. healing upon those that are sick in yeah. body. Father, we are believing by faith that those that are in the dumps of depression will be lifted in the name of Jesus. We speak against every demonic spirit. We come against every lie of the devil. Mm. We come against every attempt of the enemy to rob and try to destroy the joy that God has given us. Father, we pray, Lord, that you strengthen the church, mm. that you strengthen, yes. Lord, the saints of God. Yes. We pray for every marriage. We pray for every family. We pray for every every single individual Jesus. we pray for every unit every house we pray for blessings lord touch them father yeah. from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet god give them the wisdom that they need to continually speak words of faith yeah. that will stand against every demonic spirit mm. in the name of jesus yeah. and father lord we thank you yeah. we give you the honor yeah. we give you the glory and in Jesus' Strong mighty name, name we Jesus. pray, and we all say together, Amen. Come on, give God yes, the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Pastor Lord. Reggie, <laughs> it has certainly been a joy yes. and a blessing. I know the folks at home and enjoyed this, and there was just so much that we got out of this. I enjoy mm. perspectives from other people. Amen. I really do, really. And I know that our folks do too, because like you said, everyone has... Uh, when I gave you the three questions, you said, man, I got 500 answers for you. <laughs> because it's true. We all have a perspective mm -hmm. on what's going on. But I think we all can agree that Jesus is still on the throne. He's on the throne. He's still on the throne. Yes. He's got our back. And we're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you said something powerful, too. Ministry is going to be different. I mm -hmm. believe it's going to be powerful. It's going to be creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're really going to see a greater harvest i believe that it. i believe is with all my heart. coming absolutely we are about to dismiss everybody in prayer but don't forget as we do every single midweek service it's time to give mm. church be faithful in your tithe be faithful in your offering as you can see on the bottom of the screen there are several ways that you can give you can go ahead and mail your offering in to 2529 Austin Boulevard, or you can click on the online button or download the application of Easy Tithe or send your offering or tithe to the number, text to the number that you see on the screen. Now, folks, we got more great things coming our way. Mm. Don't forget that this coming Sunday, we conclude our series that's called No Matter What. Mm. And the title of this Sunday sermon is no matter what, let it go. Mm. There's some things that you have got to let That's good. go. That's good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dismiss in prayer. And Pastor Reggie, I'm going to have you do the honors right. and dismiss us in prayer. Here. Father, we thank you for this time. Yes. And we thank you for every person that is live listening or watching now. And even those that would watch the playback later. That there will be a grace on the discussion tonight that it will bring healing and yes. wholeness and answers yes, yes. and clarity for so many that will touch and agree with what we've yes, talked about Lord. tonight. Yes. I thank you for this precious church and its leadership and what you're doing in and through them. Hallelujah. And I thank you that grace and peace is now multiplied in and through them now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that the devil is defeated, that God is exalted, and that Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord.